the time, in the darkest night, His light still shines. God is good. God is good all the time. My God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. In the darkest night, His light still shines. God is good. God is good all the time. While we cross the aisles tonight and greet somebody. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. In the darkest night, His light still shines. God is good. God is good all the time. My God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. In the darkest night, His light still shines. God is good. God is good all the time. My God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. In the darkest night, His light still shines. God is good. God is good all the time. Amen. Why don't you give him a hand clap offer to praise if he's been good to you tonight. How many of you came here to worship tonight? Here I am to bow down, 
here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to be. I'll never know how much he costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much he costs to see my sin upon that cross. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to be. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. If our ushers would like to go ahead and come down tonight, we'll go ahead and take up our Wednesday night tithe and offering. Um, we do want to make a uh, correction. Um, the work day for the carpenter's closet is actually going to be September the 7th. Um, so not the 14th. It's going to be September the 7th. So uh, just keep that in mind. Put that on your calendar. And um, so just make sure you remember that. And if you, if you do have any questions about that, you know, reach out to Sister Julie. Um, I'm sure she'll have all the all the details. So, um, if anybody has any unspoken prayer requests, um, if you'll raise an uplifted hand and let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Dear God, we thank you for giving us this tonight, dear Lord. Thank you for bringing us through this week to this point, dear God. Jesus, I thank you for allowing us the opportunity to to be here and worship, dear Lord. God, I pray that you would just just touch in each and every need that's in this place, dear Lord. God, you see the needs that we prayed over on on Sunday morning in the in the prayer line, dear God. I pray that you would just continue to to reach in those situations, dear Lord. God, I pray that you would just touch in the unspoken prayer request here tonight, dear God. Jesus, you see each and every situation, dear God. God, I pray that your will just be done in those situations. God, I pray that you would just touch in our tithe and offering tonight, dear Lord. Let us be able to give cheerfully into your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go. You've taken me from the fiery flame. You set my feet upon the rock, and now I know. I love you, I need you, though my world may fall, I'll never let you go, my Savior, my closest friend, and I will worship you until the very end. Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go. You've taken me from the fiery clay. You set my feet upon the rock, and now I know. I 
Amen. I love it when the music fades and you can hear everybody's voices because when you when you hear everybody's voices, you can feel where their heart is. And you can feel that worship all going up. Because I can go ahead and tell you, we've got microphones up here, but it's not about us. This isn't a show. This isn't a performance. We're not here to entertain. We're not here to entertain you. We're here to entertain God. And, and when we just back off of everything, it's just so beautiful to me to hear hearts, to hear voices being lifted up to God. That's just amazing. There's, there's no better sound, and especially to hear our, our young children crying out and singing to God. That's, that's awesome. It is. And so... It's, Thank, thank you. Thank you for singing to him. And I know that I'm thanking you, but I'm sure he's looking down and, and he, he appreciates it as well. He appreciates that worship that, that you bring forth. So thank you so much. And uh, I'm glad that we've got a God that, that is truly the lover of our souls. And I know I've, I said this in the last couple of weeks that there's no way I could thank him enough. Even if I thanked him every day, it wouldn't be enough for how much he's done for me. We serve a good God. If our student ministries would like to be dismissed tonight, they can. Sounds like somebody needs to shed some light on the situation down there.
There's always one, right? It just has to be mine. <laughs> if you'd like to be seated, you can tonight. As a uh, as I'm sure you've become accustomed to, um, I like I like group participation, uh, in you know messages and in different things. I like people to be involved um, because again, just like the singing, you know, it's it's not about me; it's about everybody. And I think that when you can get people involved, that people tend to remember that a little bit more. So. We're going to get involved tonight if you're willing to participate. So what I want everybody to do is everybody's going to come down front and we're going to do this little dance. And I'm just messing with y'all. We're not. <laughs> Sister Susan's eyes got real big. <laughs> no, we're not, we're not going to do a dance. All right. But um, I, do, I do have a question for you tonight. And if, if anybody would, would be so willing to participate in this, um, I would greatly appreciate it. But first off, I'll ask this question. How many of us in here tonight have been wounded? Everybody's hands went up. Good. All right. Now, how many of us in here tonight were healed from that wound? Lots of hands. Good. Would anybody be willing to share of a wound that they have had that God has healed them from? Anybody? Anybody? It can be anybody. If you've got a wound and God healed, it, healed you from it and you want to share it, now's the time. Nobody brave enough? All right. Well, I'll start then, and then maybe somebody will be brave enough after I get done. So when I get done, if you want to share, raise your hand, okay? And then there is a purpose behind this. Casey might not think this, but there's a purpose behind everything that I do. Huh. There is. All right. So I've got, I've got lots of wounds because when I was... Growing up, we used to ride four wheelers. We'd get into all kinds of stuff, um, and so I've I've been wounded plenty of times. And a lot of times, when when something happens to you, and you know God heals you, we we tend not to think of it as a healing. Um, I've got cuts and different things on me to where, you know that that I consider it to be healed. All right. A lot of people don't consider that a healing. They just, you know, they look at it and they're like, well, you know, I had a cut, you know. It, you know, it's, it's not there anymore. You know, there's a, there's a mark there, but we don't think of that as healing. A lot of times people, they think that, you know, somebody has to get out of a wheelchair or eyes have to be open for it to be a true miracle or a healing. But I'm here to tell you tonight that don't take granted of the little things that God does for you. And so with, with being wounded, there's going to be scars when you are healed a lot of times. And sometimes they won't be as easily seen. I've got things on me that you can't really see anymore, but I know that it's there. And I remember it. One of the things that I get asked a lot is when I buzz my head or bu buzz my hair real short, I've got a scar right here on the side of my head. And, and I get asked about that a lot. People come up to me and they'll point at it and they'll say, you know, you know what's that on your head? You know, what, what is that scar from? And that was from where when I was younger, I had to have staples put in my head. Because I had a little motorcycle, and the motorcycle had kind of tipped over with me, and there just happened to be some metal piping laying around, and I hit that metal piping with my head, and therefore, I had a wound 
I had to go get staples, and now I have a scar there. I try to tell people, you know, that maybe that's what's wrong with me. You know, is you know the the head trauma or the damage. You know, there's also, you know, with my eye right here, um, you can see a little bit of spot where I got hit with a baseball bat when I was in fourth grade. And a lot of people remember that. Even all my friends still talk about it. Man, I remember that time you got hit with a baseball bat, you know, when we were in gym class. They said, you bled and bled and bled. And, and I, I'm pretty sure that up until a few years ago when they – replaced the carpet at the uh, primary school. It used to be that green carpet. I don't know if anybody remembers that, but there was still a little bit of a blood stain over there to where I was laid down, which I thought was kind of cool. I had left my mark, you know. But it left, a, you know, it left a, 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 you know, a little bit of a, a scar, but, you know, praise God I was all right. Because if I would have been hit a little harder with the bat, I would have had to have a glass eye. And as everybody knows, this is kind of your temple right here. If I'd have been hit a little harder than that, who knows what would have happened. I would have had permanent brain damage, maybe, instead of the temporary brain damage that I have. So we've all, we, everybody's been wounded at some point. Does anybody want to share one, by the way, while we're at it? Anybody want to share their wound? Somebody got a cool story or something like that? Nobody's been bit by a dog or anything like that? No. All right. You want to share one? You got bit by a dog? Where at? Your hand? Is there a scar there? There's no scar? Well, praise God. That's good. Henry, you got one? Yep. He ran in front of the bat. I didn't run in front of the bat. I just happened to be standing in the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, <laughs> some days I feel like running towards the bat. <laughs> so every one of us, by show of hands, sometimes bats get slung and people had to be, people, or, you know, there's a story behind that as well. We were hitting softballs one day and it was so sweaty out there, you know, in the summertime. And I swung a bat, bat slipped out of my hands, hit Casey in the face, and Reagan and Smith's mama had to put her bat together. So, so, yeah, you do? Brother Anthony, you got one? Let's hear it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh. Man. Stuff happens. It does. It, constantly. And I know that's that's one thing that has has kind of scared me about, you know, being a parent is, you know, when am I gonna be at work and get that call? Hey, you know, something happened to your kid. Um nobody nobody likes to get that call. Um, I'm just, I've already gotten one call that, you know, Stafford, you know, was twirling around dancing and hit the side of a dresser or something and knocked her tooth out. And, you know, now she looks like, you know, she's, you know, from Tennessee or Alabama. Um, and I, I struggle with it at first. I'm sorry, Sister Kylie. I'm just messing with you. But, but things happen, you know, things happen. It's, it's, it's part of life. Um, we're going to get wounded. Um, we're we're going to get cut. You know, we, we can't walk around in a, in a plastic bubble all the time. So, but what I want you to know is that every, every wound is different. Take a, a cut, for instance. Some cuts aren't very deep or very big. You know, sometimes you don't even notice them. I've been, I've been cut before and, you know, look down and, you know, oh, oh my gosh, I'm bleeding, you know. Or somebody even come up to me and they say, you know, do you know your leg's bleeding? No, I had no idea. 
Sometimes you don't know. Some cuts are very deep and, and gashing, and you can you know, bleed out for a long period of time, and a wound would not heal properly without the blood. Without the blood, a wound would not be healed properly. A cut would not be healed properly. I want to remind us tonight that we need the blood of Jesus Christ applied to our life. The reason we need that blood applied to our life is because there is cleansing and there is healing power through His blood. Now, if we don't tend to a wound properly, infection can begin to set in. I think everybody knows what, what I'm talking about. Everybody can hear that mom voice in the back of your head. You better keep that thing clean or it's going to get infected. I hear it right now. Huh. Stop picking at it. Just leave it alone. Yep, germs. Germs get in there. Infection gets in there. There's always the great thing, you know, you got to cut on your arm or something. You know, they're going to end up having to cut that arm off. It's scary and to not touch it, you know. And so if we don't, it, but honestly, if we don't tend to stuff, if we don't tend to our wounds properly, you know, if we don't let that blood do its job and that infection sets in, then that's when a small problem can become a big problem. And it can happen fast. I've heard of people being at the ho in the hospital before and, you know, because a, a cut or something like that where it got infected and it spread, you know, across, you know, their whole body and started affecting other parts of their body. You know, not just the flesh, but different components of their body. Things started, you know, getting infected, you know, internally and started shutting down. This is what you don't want to happen. So we have to realize when we're wounded. We have to know when we're wounded. And we have to tend properly to that wound. I want to let you know tonight that the devil, he wants to cut you. He does. If you don't think he does, and you're walking around here, you know, like on cloud nine thinking, you know, well, you know, he can't touch me. He, he will. He'll, he'll sneak through every now and then and he'll get you. Ask Job. Job was highly affected by the devil. He attacked him. The devil, he wants to cut you. He wants to cut your family. He wants to cut your marriage. He wants to cut your kids. And guess what? He wants to cut this church. And He may cut us, like I said, He may cut us every now and then. But I'm glad to know that if we apply that blood of Jesus Christ to our wounds, that we won't be left with anything but a scar. That's all it'll be. Now, a lot of people are sitting back there thinking, well, you know, that sounds negative, a scar. A lot of people don't like scars. They think that they're, they're ugly or they're hideous. If possible, a lot of people try to hide scars. I'm sure there's some people that are thinking, you know, since my scar can be seen when I, when I cut my hair, you know, down real low, why don't you just keep your hair longer? Because I don't care about the scar. It doesn't bother me. When people come up to me and ask me about it, I just tell them the story. But praise God, I'm fine. At the end of it, I'm fine. I'm here. I'm still here. He kept me. I wasn't wounded worse than I was. And so you don't have to hide your scars. And you definitely, you don't have to be ashamed of them. Now, I know that we're, you know, here when we were talking earlier and sharing stories, we were talking about physical wounds. 
But what I'm talking about right now is I'm talking about spiritual wounds to where the devil will try to, to cut different areas of your life. He'll, he'll reach into your finances. He'll reach into everything he can to try and, to try and get you. Because if he can't get you, he'll try to reach the things around you to try and get a reaction out of you. But the thing I love about it, the thing I, I love about scars is that there's always a story behind them. There's always a story. And that's what kind of the point that I wanted to make tonight by giving you all an opportunity to talk about your wounds, to talk about your scars, is to maybe share some stories. Because we call them stories, but you know what the Bible calls them? Testimonies. And we've all got, everybody likes to think about, you know, that, that everybody's got, you know, one testimony. You know, and their testimony is, you know, how they came to God, you know, how they were, you know, pulled from the, you know, the, the world, you know, pulled out of the world and they, they came to know God. Yes, that is a testimony. But that is a testimony of how you came to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But I'm here to tell you tonight, He's did more than that for just me. And He's continued to, and He will continue to. So I've got all these different testimonies throughout my life that I can share with somebody. You could go write a book about the different things that's happened to you. And you might think, well, you know, ain't nobody interested, wouldn't nobody be interested in that? Well, they sure as the world are interested in everything you got to say on Facebook. I mean, come on. If you don't think people will read your book, go post something on Facebook and see what happens. There'll be people reading all over it, sharing it. And they might not share it, you know, actually on Facebook. They'll pick up the phone. Do you see what happened with such and such? I'm serious. I've talked about this before. They will. They will do it. So you know what? Why not instead of posting something on there about you know negative or posting some kind of junk on there, why don't you post about what God's done for you? Why don't you post about you know the trials that He's brought you through? Why don't you thank Him while you're on there? Praise God for another day. You know, just simple things. It's okay. It's okay to have trials. It's okay to have scars. And it's okay for people to ask you. Some people, you know, might get offended, you know. Well, you know, they ain't got any right to be asking me about that, you know. If Jesus brought you through something, just share it. That's what He wants you to do. He wants you to share it. It never fails. Like I said, every time I cut my hair, somebody different come up. It, it doesn't matter how many times I've cut my hair before. At work, people will come up, you know, and they're like, you know, well, what's that? Well, you've seen me cut with my hair before, and you just now asked me about this? It's just the way it works. There's somebody watching you at different times. And that's where... As I said, you're given an opportunity to share that testimony of how great God is and how you were healed or how you were brought through a situation. So share it. We shouldn't be ashamed of that. And the reason that you shouldn't be ashamed of your scars and you shouldn't be ashamed of what God's brought you through and what He's brought you from is because it came with a cost. It wasn't free. I know a lot of people, they, they, they say, and, you know, it, it's true for the most part that, you know, yeah, money can't, money can't get you into heaven, you know. You can't buy your way into heaven. Well, let me tell you this. You can't personally buy your way into heaven, but that doesn't mean that it didn't come with a cost. Because somebody had to pay your way. And somebody did pay our way. We've been covered. Man, I tell you what, I love it, and, and I'm just going to be real with you tonight. If Daddy says, you know, hey, what are you doing on Saturday night? And I'm like, I don't know. I ain't got any plans. And he's like, well, you know, we're going to Longhorn or something. You know, I'm buying. Yeah, I'm, I got plans now. I'm covered. You know, I'm good. Why can't we have that same attitude about God? 
He's covered us. He's paid our bill. He's paid the price. Just jump on board. That's all you got to do is just jump on board. It's a free ride. Just hop in. Get on the boat. It came with a cost. Isaiah 53, 5-6. I know a lot of people are familiar with this, this verse. It says, but He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon Him. And by His stripes, we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to His own way. And the Lord has laid on Him the iniquity of us all. Man, that's something to shout about right there. By His stripes, we are healed. Now notice it doesn't say, you know, that we, we may be healed. It doesn't say that we will be healed. It says that we are healed. Are. That are is a definite. That are means it's going to happen. And I'm so thankful tonight that he, took, he sat there and he, he took those stripes upon his back so that I could be healed. So that, that I could have a testimony to share. So I could tell about the good things that God has done for me tonight. Now, I'm going to tell you one story. Before I move on of something I feel like supernatural, and sometimes when I tell this story, people laugh, and I mean, I guess if you think about it, it's funny, but if you experienced it, if you were there, it wasn't very funny, but I'm just telling you. When I, when I tell it, if you laugh, you're not going to hurt my feelings because it happens all the time. All right. So when I was about 10 or 11, we were riding along the lake in a boat. And I was sitting at the front of the boat. Well, all of a sudden, out of the middle of nowhere, we hit a sandbar. And I go over the front of the boat, and the boat goes right over top of me. Now, you can start to begin to think about the bad things that could have happened. I mean, I literally just got ran over by a boat. And that's the part that tends to get, you know, laugh out of people, that I got ran over by a boat. So, I mean, my back could have been broke. My spine could have been completely messed up. My, my head could have, you know, caught the propeller back there or, or something. And... According to mom and daddy, which I remember it, I just, I was kind of just there in the water for a second, and then I just stood up. And I have, that, that is one that I have no wounds, I have no scars, all I've got is a story. All I've got is a story on that. And I'm lucky to be here tonight. I am. Because that is definitely one instance in my life that I felt like God kept me. And that's why I want to tell you tonight that even though, yeah, I wasn't wounded from that, but I still have a testimony from that. And I've still got that story that I can tell of how God kept me. And if I don't give Him the glory for what He's done in my life, then I feel like I'm wasting His gift. And He's given you a gift tonight. He's given you the gift of healing. He's given you the gift of power that you can have. There's power in that Holy Ghost that can come inside of you. And you might, you might sit back there and think, well, you know, I've had all these things happen in my life, and if, 
And if all these people, you know, knew the scars that I have and, and what I've gone through, you know, they might look at me differently. They might not look at me the same way. I could tell you about things that I've done, things that I've said, to where you, you'd kick me, out, kick me out of here right now and you wouldn't want to listen to a word I had to say anymore. And then that's fine. But I'm glad, and I spoke with somebody about this earlier this week, I'm glad that, that I'm not the one that's going to have to do the judging. It's not my place to judge. And let me tell you this too. This is in Ephesians. It says the measure by which you judge is the same measure that you will be judged on. So watch how you look at people. Watch how you judge people. We've got people out there that are hurting. We've got people that are out there that, that have scars. They don't feel like they're worthy enough to be in this place. They don't feel like they're worthy enough to come to church. They feel like they're broken. They feel like they've been beaten. They don't feel like they're good enough. Let me remind you of Romans 3.23 when it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For all have sinned. I may have shared this with you before, but I told one of my buddies one time that was struggling with feeling uncomfortable in a church that he was going to. And then I felt bad for him. But I told him, I said, man, I said, if we all had to come into church and we all had to wear a shirt that had all of the different things on it that we've done in our life, that's got all our different scars on there, wouldn't nobody feel comfortable in this place? They wouldn't. So just think about that tonight. But thank God that we've got a gracious God. I thank Him for His gracefulness. I thank Him for His mercy that, that He pours out. I thank Him for His healing. Because we got, we've got people out there that don't think they're worthy, but He still took the stripes for you. And you might not feel worthy tonight, but just know He took the stripes for you. You were worth it. Worth it to Him. If you've got a wound that hasn't healed tonight and is still open, apply some blood to it. Take care of it. Don't let it infect your life. Because I can go ahead and tell you right now that this church has been wounded a little bit as of late. But I want the blood to be applied in this place. I want the covering of God in this place because I want healing to take place. And when healing takes place, guess what? There will be excitement again. And when that excitement begins to come back, that's when the worship will come back the way it's supposed to. And when that worship returns, there will be a fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost poured out on this place. And that's what we need. Daddy, if you'll come up to the... If you'll all stand with me tonight. I don't know what you've got going on tonight. I don't know what's going on inside you. I don't know if you're, if you're you know, wounded physically, if you're wounded mentally, if you're wounded spiritually, financially. I'm, just, I'm here to tell you tonight that no matter what you've got going on or no matter what you've come through that you feel like may still be haunting you, just know that there's healing there for you. Because it says by His stripes, we are healed. Just claim the victory. I see this, I see this little saying going around now that, that says, won't He do it? Won't He do it? And yeah, it's a good saying. I'm not bashing the saying. I'm not. But you know what? I can sit back and I can say, won't he do it? But you know what I want my saying to be? I'm going to praise him like he already has. I'm going to praise him like he already has done it. Because that will show faith in your life. That will show faith through your actions that you know that he can and you know that he will 
And you know what? According to Isaiah 53, he already has. Because it says we are healed. I was talking about that healing taking place, not just here, but in your life. I came up with another little saying. All right. So we talked about there being excitement again, that worship returning, and there being a, a fresh outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I'm here to tell you tonight that I want to be sealed, healed, thrilled, and filled. That's what I want to be tonight. I don't want to sit around like I'm, I'm busted wide open and then I'm hurt. Because if I sit around like that, then nothing's going to happen. And then that's when that infection is going to take place. But I want to apply that blood to my, my wounds. I want there to be a covering of them. Of them. And there, yeah, there may be a scar, but you know what? I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed of it tonight. Don't be ashamed. Be thankful. Be thankful of what God's brought you through. Be thankful of what He's going to bring you through. Because He's always going to be there. I'm going to open up these altars tonight. And I'm going to word it like this. If you've got something that you feel like that, that you know, you're wounded with right now, come give it to Him. Come apply the blood to it. If you've got something that God has brought you through, come thank Him for it. And if you've got something that is coming up that you want to you want to go ahead and get God working on, come ask Him. That's all you've got to do. Just come apply that blood. These altars are open up. They're going to sing a song. Let's just spend some time loving on God tonight. Come if you will.